boat nerds, islanders, welcome back to another video. Today's video, as you can already tell by the title, is all about electronics, boat wiring, fuse panels, switch panels, isolators, equipment, connectors, you name it. We're gonna rewire the boat. My 24 year old boat, by the way. Morale is high, quick disclaimer though. A similar setup in my van, which I did some time ago. And as you can see, it has not gone on fire. So I'm not a marine electrician, I've gone turbo nerd on this. And I think it's a fairly safe setup. Okay, so I built the circuit here on an old whiteboard I wasn't using. Quick demonstration. There we go, the old anchor light connected. It's gonna show you on this initially, and then we'll move on to actually installing it on the boat. What have we got here? Got a small 12 volt battery. This is not the battery I'm actually gonna use. Obviously the batteries on the boat are much bigger and that runs with eight gauge cable. And I will say that this is an eight gauge cable. The circuit I've used is just a cable, just for the circuit. This is my eight gauge cable. I've already made my battery, battery terminals, good quality marine grade tin copper. I'll discuss wiring shortly and I've got various other wiring here. My eight gauge cable is capable of 55 amps. So that's the limit of the circuit. That's why I've got a 50 amp circuit breaker. So what happens here is breaks the circuit. It means that I don't have to replace the fuse while I'm out there. And that's going to be close to the battery within 12 inches. And then here we go. We have a battery isolator. So two positions on off and it's simple. The wire just comes in, connects to one side and then comes out the other side using ring terminals like so. Again, this is eight gauge cable and this runs into the fuse. Now this fuse box, again, I'll put a link to it, show it a bit more detail. The reason I went for one of these was you can just wire up a panel like this. You can see it's got these individual fuses. We'll be taking those out shortly. That's the switch panel there. I'll show you a bit more detail in that. Ignore my connections. This is just for demonstration purposes. So we have one positive coming in and then these are all individually fused to my accessories such as the VHF, uh, fish finder, nav lights, anchor light. And then we have one negative here and then this here, tin copper, negative bus bar. So it means I don't have to run all my negatives from my accessories back to the battery. I can just run them to here, which is the fuse panel. The accessories run out through to three, the three way switch and then to the device itself. I'll explain this in a little bit more detail because these come pre-wired and they're pretty shocking. But before we do that, I want to talk about wiring. So one of the most common things I've seen on the forums is people querying what wire to use. I'm only using marine grade wire. Uh, these two wires, this is standard 12 volt automotive wire and this is marine grade. Look, how, look at the thickness difference in the uh, insulation. This is quite rigid. This is really flexible. So get through all your conduits, etc. Uh, tin copper is more corrosion resistant. It's a little bit more expensive, don't get me wrong, but I think overall, now I worked out based on the current in amps and the distance I was gonna run, what cable, what wiring I needed. Uh, eight gauge, obviously, from the battery. I think that's fairly standard. Some people use six gauge cable. Uh, and then I've worked out that I have 12 gauge cable beyond there. Now, working out the distance, just a quick one you include the positive and the negative. So it's the complete circuit. It's not just the positive on this small 16 foot boat uh, based, bear in mind that what I'm running from this switch panel is basically uh, nav lights, fish finder, interior LED lights. The drawer is quite low on a lot of this stuff. I'll link that, I'll link that chart below so everybody can see it. So this is the arsenal for today. There's my 12 gauge wire. These are amazing. I showed these before, low temperature solder connectors, heat shrink, ring connectors, really good you crimp them then you use the heat gun like so and uh just gives you a bit more protection and then i'll heat shrink everything on top uh, i'll color coordinate each individual accessory that way if there's any issues i can trace it back really easy standard blade fuses uh, these are for cable management wiring grommets for any holes i have to uh, run cables through to keep them in good order uh, and just basic uh, dremel here for cutting into the dash crimping snipping this here by the way you've seen plenty of these i don't rate these ones at all got myself one of these where you put the cable in and it just separates it i'll show a quick demonstration of that it's so good it's got a better crimper it's got a cutter on but the primary reason for that it's just so much nice i'll link all this stuff on amazon which is where i bought most of my stuff one of the reasons i really like the fuse panel is because it's got these led lights 
So if ever a fuse breaks, the LED light comes up and that's easy accessible. It's really quite good quality actually. It's IP rated, so it is waterproof to a degree. Where I'm gonna position it, it's not gonna get wet. Comes with a waterproof cover as well, uh, with gaps obviously to run your cables in and out of. So here's the 50 amp circuit breaker. The brand is PTT, there's other brands out there, but there are cheaper versions on Amazon, but go slightly more expensive. When it breaks, that goes down like so, and you can just click it back in. Uh, again, tin copper, waterproof. Uh, the load comes in here at the top and from the battery, and then this runs out to my circuit breaker. From what I can see, if you buy the cheaper ones, they trip out way below the likes of that, which is 50 amps. And this is the obviously on off switch. I have another one of these on order um, to do with dual batteries, but essentially there's only two ways you can run it, on and off. And then in the back, like so, you just connect to it. One in, one out. It's got various plates you can block off and it's just screwed in with these Allen keys. Okay, so this is the switch I've opted to use. Yeah, again, it's uh, waterproof and all that jazz. Uh, purchased from Amazon. I've gone for a five switch one because that's that suits me for what I need at the moment. Uh, it comes with a 12 volt outlet which is good for charging things like drones, etc. perhaps. The voltage meter and then two USB outputs, which are three amp, which is quite good. Got an LED light here as well, which says when they're on. Now the wiring at the back, you, this is how it comes, pre-wired, except for that first one. It comes with these uh, inline fuses. Now this is for people who either choose not to do much with the electronics and just want like an easy solution but I'm running a separate fuse panel because I don't want to be climbing around the back looking for one of these that ever blows. So I'll take all these off, which is what I have done here. Um, I'll explain that shortly. I'm going to leave the jumpers for all the negatives or ground wires, as you depends what you want to call them. And I'll run this back to the fuse panel. But each individual power in from the battery for these switches, I will run separately. So they're not going to be daisy chained. and that's how they can be fused properly. And then in the spade connectors in the middle of the switch, that runs out to the accessory such as uh, the VHF, nav lights. Bottom part of the switch, I will leave daisy chained and I'll run one separate run from here into the fuse panel because with me having the battery isolator, it means that I'm not gonna be drawing unnecessary uh, power. Not that these will much anyway, uh, when, when I'm not using it. Inline fuses are off. Not going to use them, obviously. Check this out, by the way. That is the same winch. Remember the old knackered one? I'll overlay it when it was before. That is the same winch. Myself and my father-in-law, Paul. Cheers, Paul. Brought it back to life. Basically, a lot of wire wool and some love. Some hammerite lube. New strap. It's an 8 meter, 50 mil strap with a new snap hook on. And I replaced the bolts underneath as well. Stainless steel, obviously. You've seen my console previously. That's the old switch panel. The actual switch panel itself is okay. The wiring's pretty bad, but I'm going to utilize that separately. The new switch panel is going to go here. Ignore the bilge pump for now. I've been part way through installing that, but want to do the fuse panel first. That's another video. So I'm going to put the switch panel here. I'm going to put the fuse here underneath the solar. In here is fairly protected, so that's protected. Everything is at the console. <laughs> and if you see my new fish finder, you'll realize I do need space. I've got an absolute beast of a low rant one, which is gonna be unreal for the shark finding. Uh, I have checked inside, doesn't interfere with any steering cables or anything. We're good to go. Measurements taken. It's a weapon of choice. The Dremel cutting drill bit, I think it's called. Okay, that's in now. Uh, but I'm not going to fasten her in until the wiring is complete at the back. Fuse panel's on. I'm just going to screw some uh, wiring grommets in. Just using a small hole cutter to do that. Uh, there's my solar panel set up. Just disconnected some of the wiring for that. But did a video on this if you want to see it. I'll link it here. These are slightly too big, but you get the you get the idea. Stops any cable rubbing. I replace these at a later date. If we look under the gunnels. You can see all the existing wiring was never the same grade as it should have been so I'm just running it underneath I have conduit cabling 
to protect it further, which I'll do. For now, I'm just testing all the connections. I've shown these before on the channel, but these are unreal. Just creating some cables here between the fuse and the switch. I've created about six in total. As you can see, we've got heat shrink ring and heat shrink and spade connectors for either end. And then color coordinated heat shrinks to go on each end. So therefore, it just aids me in troubleshooting should I have any wiring connections. For example, yellow is gonna be for my VHF radio and I've got that in my wiring diagram. So I'll just go ahead and uh, heat shrink these up. Some people might think it's a bit overkill heat shrinking these and then heat shrinking over the top, but in a marine environment, I just don't think you can be too careful, so. So these are all heat shrinked up now. I've got various colors for various ones, say yellow VHF, red, anchor light, so on, white GPS. I'll also keep a stock of about five or six of these spare, just in some uh, waterproof bag in a pelly case should I need to replace anything while out in the water just saves messing around and obviously as I've said the colors for these are all in a wiring diagram should I ever sell the boat Gucci in true British weather fashion it's just started raining really heavily so trailing cover is on we're going for it anyway and to top it off some fella has just started digging up the road at the bottom of the boat park with a jackhammer so I hope that's not too disruptive Let's get back to the actual wiring. It's complete now. The cover is on, let's pop that off. Uh, it's all labeled up uh, with all my devices. So I know what is what. And then you get additional stickers, but to be honest, they're a little bit American, but we can work with that. So main positive in to the fuse panel, main negative in, negative bus bar, all these negative connections, which are black, obviously, are uh, back to my devices, such as my anchor light and VHF radio. This is not the position of the VHF radio, it goes up there, but as you can see, it's a mess. I'm working on that. So I've worked out all my fuses, I've put all my fuses in place for each device. And we've got a color coordinated 12 gauge wire connections, which go to the panel, uh, switch panel, which is here. Just show you very quickly. You see that anchor light is on, anchor light is off, VHF. And obviously the bottom part of the connections are on showing 13.7 volts usb i've just tested works a dream and the 12 volt connection as well fasten that in shortly so just to reiterate these connections from the fuse panel are my powers through the fuse which go to the bottom part of the connection so our yellow is my vhf goes here into the bottom part of the switch and then this red live is from the actual VHF radio and then the negative goes to the panel there and that's literally it as you can see I haven't connected everything yet red is my anchor light so the red positive here basically connected to here and again the negative is connected back to here but yeah works well I also as you can see I've kept the neutrals jumped across, so there's just one main neutral coming in off there. Uh, but what I did with the bottom part of the panel, which is the USB, I created, I just put it on a separate connection on a fuse. So if there's any issues down there, it's not going to blow the whole switch panel. So what we'll do now is we'll connect this up. Obviously, the anchor light is not going to be positioned there, but today is not the day for fitting the anchor on the roof of this. No problems. GPS is not connected yet. Uh, VHF is, but that's not its final place, obviously that's going to live up there. The main cabin lights, not fitted them yet, they're going to be this. They are the RGB light strips, this is a 10 meter pack which will go right under all the gunnels, all the way around the entire boat. It's a bit of a mess back there, but you get the picture. And another thing is, it's got red lights, which is epic for night time because it won't affect night vision. So let's see how they go, I'll fit them in a future video. Oh, by the way, uh, for drilling through the transom, I got, and also I got a couple of questions when I fitted the solar panel about not siliconing the, the threads. I actually did. I just didn't include it in the video. This is the stuff I use. It's uh, Silkaflex 291. This is the stuff they recommend. So this is the stuff I use. It's not cheap, but it's really good in a marine sort of salt environment. So, so yeah, really pleased with that panel. 
One thing I did see, which is typical after making a video, was I saw someone had fitted a hatch to theirs and they'd opened the hatch and fitted the fuse panel inside the hatch. So that's something I could potentially cut out and fit in future. And again, I could put the solar panel controller on there as well. As I said, the VHF is going up there uh, when I sort that wiring out. And also the Hook 9 sonar fish finder, need to install that. That's definitely going to happen. That's going to be a, it's going to be epic. And also the Seaflow bilge pump started filming that video, but I don't want to make this video too long. So that'll be another video as well, combined with some of the other stuff. So, so I hope you guys are really enjoying the boat series. I'm loving it. Uh, the windows also need replacing. That's happening. Yeah, it's quite exciting actually. It won't be long before we're out in the water doing camping, shark, fishing adventures, catching cooks sort of things. But I want to document the journey, uh, getting the boat ready so that you guys could see what it, what it is I've got. And I know there's a lot of interest out there. But just to finish the video off really, what I will say is this is my way of doing it. I personally believe this is a safe way, but it's totally up to you guys if you want to copy my setup or whatever. Just work out using the charts to make sure you're not overloading your circuit. And uh, yeah, don't just skimp on the wiring basically. Uh, conduit cabling is all in place, that looks good. Stay tuned for future videos. Thanks for joining me for this. And if you haven't already, check out my latest wild camping adventure to just to showcase the beautiful island I live on. Thanks guys, see you on the next one.